ಅದ್ವೈತ ಪಂಚರತ್ನಂ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಆಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದೇಂದ್ರ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ನಾವು ಮೇಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎ ಬುಕ್ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಡಿ ಬಿ ಗಂಗೊಳ್ಳಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ಇಯರ್ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಪಂಚರತ್ನಂ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೀನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೀ ಫೇಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟರ್ಡೇ ಟುಡೇ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ನಾವು ಆತ್ಮಾನಾತ್ಮ ವಿವೇಕ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಆಫ್ ದ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಪಂಚರತ್ನಂ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಪಂಚರತ್ನಂ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ನಮಃ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣಮೂರ್ತಿ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ದಂಬೆ ಪುಣಚ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆತ್ಮಾನಾತ್ಮ ವಿವೇಕ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ದ ರೀಸನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಕಾಮನ್ ರನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇಟೆಂಡ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟ್ಯೂಶಿವ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಟೈಪ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವೆರಿ ಎಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನ್ ಆರ್ ಶಿವಸ್ವರೂಪ ಈಸ್ ಟ್ರೂಲಿ ದಿ ಆಬ್ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆತ್ಮಾನಾತ್ಮ ವಿವೇಕ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಡ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಆತ್ಮನ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅನಾತ್ಮನ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆತ್ಮನ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಎಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅನಾತ್ಮನ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ಫಿನಾಮಿನನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಅದರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟೂ ಕ್ವಶನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಡೆಲಿಬ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಇಂಟ್ಯೂಶ್ಯೂಲಿ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಟೆಲೆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಎಲೋನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಕಾಗ್ನೈಸ್ ದಿ ಎಸೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ನೇಚರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟೂ ಫಿನಾಮಿನಾ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆತ್ಮಾನಾತ್ಮ ವಿವೇಕ ಇನ್ ವೇದಾಂತಿಕ್ ಪಾರ್ಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ರೀಸನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಇನ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿವೇಕ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ವೇರಿಯಬ್ಲಿ ಬಿಲೀವ್ಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದಿ ಬಾಡಿ ದಿ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಆರ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರೂ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದೇರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಈಚ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಎಂಟರ್ಟೈನ್ಸ್ ಎ ಡೀಪ್ ಸೀಟೆಡ್ ಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಫಾಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಟು ದಿ ಇಫೆಕ್ಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಟು ಸಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಚ್ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಎಟ್ ಸಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ಟೈಮ್ ಟು ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಎಗೋ ಎಟ್ ಸಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ರೀಜನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅರ್ತ್ ವಿಚ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಎ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹ್ಯೂಜ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಗೆಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಸಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಚ್ ಆ್ಯನ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಅಪ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ಸಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಚ್ ಆನ್ ವೊಕೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಜಾಬ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಎ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ವಿತ್ ಎ ವೈಫ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಲೇಟಿವ್ಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಪ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸ್ಪಾನ್ ಎಲೋಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಬೈ ದಿ ಆರ್ ಮೈ ಟಿ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಆನ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡೈ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಕಾಮನ್ ನೋಷನ್ ಕಾಮನ್ ಕಾಮನ್ಲಿ ವಾಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸೇ ಆರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ನೋ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ in the minds of such people <coughs> a profound doubt of the following type will persist and pester constantly how at all can i get the conviction that i am the eternally pure free parama parameshwara how is it at all possible for me who lives for a few years in a corner of this vast universe created by parameshwara and who will eventually die to be that ishwara himself hence in order to get rid of that misconception the method of atmanatma viveka that a genuine mumukshu meaning high rank seeker who is determined with one pointed zeal and aspiration to attain moksha or liberation beatitude here and now in this very life span here and now
ನಾಹಂ ದೇಹೋ ನೇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಣ್ಯಂತರಂಗಂ ನಾಹಂಕಾರ ಪ್ರಾಣವರ್ಗೋ ನ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ದಾರಾಪತ್ಯಾಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ವಿತ್ತಿ ದೂರ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಗಾತ್ಮ ಶಿವೋಹಂ ಸೊ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಬಾಡಿ ನ ಅಹಂ ದೇಹ ನೇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಣಿ ಅಂತರಂಗಂ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಮೈಂಡ್ ನ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಗೋ ಆರ್ ಐ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ಅಹಂ ಭಾವ ಐ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೀ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಇಗೋ ನ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈಟಲ್ ಬ್ರೆತ್ ನ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಇಂಟಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈಟಲ್ ಬ್ರೆತ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫೋರ್ಸಸ್ ನಾಹಂ ಪ್ರಾಣ ಪ್ರಾಣವರ್ಗ ನ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ದಾರಾಪತ್ಯ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ವಿತ್ತಾದಿ ದೂರ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅವೇ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ವೈಫ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ದಾರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಾರಾ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಪತ್ನಿ ದಾರಾ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ನಿತ್ಯ ನಿತ್ಯ ಬಹುವಚನ ಅಪತ್ಯ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ತಾದಿ ದೂರ ಹೌಸ್ ಆರ್ ವಿತ್ತ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಮನಿ ವೆಲ್ ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅವೇ ಫಾರ್ ಅವೇ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದೀಸ್ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವೆರಿಲಿ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಶಿವ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಗಾತ್ಮ ಶಿವೋಹಂ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವೆರಿಲಿ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಶಿವ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ವಿಟ್ನೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಎಟರ್ನಲ್ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಗಾತ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ನರ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಕಮೆಂಟ್ರಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಅನಾತ್ಮ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದಿ ಕಾಮನ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದಿ ಐ ಇನ್ ಹಿಮ್ have been sublated refuted one by one first i am neither the body nor the senses let us see today some people have taken the body or the senses to be themselves in the gross things seen outside like the stone stand etc there does not exist any sentience consciousness these things like stone etc do not move about by themselves in them the symptoms like inhalation exhalation blood circulation etc for distinguishing the existence of consciousness are not there they cannot see nor can they hear because all because of all such reasons there exists a distinction between inanimate things like the stones sand wood etc and human beings like us we are chetanas or animate beings while they are jada vastus or inanimate gross things thus many people have commonly reckoned uh, this is the common people also opinion some others have deliberated a little more and have opined in the manner things like the stones and etc are lifeless entities while we human beings are living beings the lifeless things themselves have undergone certain transformations and have acquired the forms of the body and the senses endowed with the life therefore considered from the standpoint of their inner essential nature <coughs> the body and the senses and the external things the two are one and same indeed even so we the human beings possess the capacity of organizing the external things as also the faculty of utilizing them for our benefit for this reason alone we call the external things by pronouns like that this whereas we ca- we call the uh, conglomeration conglomeration of the body and the senses i but the above opinions of both the groups are not proper if the group or conglomeration of the body and the senses is itself the entity or substance called this i myself or ego then in each of the parts 
and limbs of the body as well as in each one of the senses awareness or consciousness as i should not exist but it is our experience in our experience universally that in each one of the organs or limbs and in each one of the senses also we have an innate awareness in the manner i am waking uh, walking i am touching i am smelling and i am seeing another point the body has many parts or organs the senses too are many if each one of these were the entity called i how come the one who has many senses is not aware of his being many in the manner eyes are we in fact we all have the deep seated innate notion of this entity called i as one and one only what is the reason for this there is yet another objection that whether in the case of the various parts or organs of the body whether in the case of the senses or whether in the case of their conjoined groups or conglomerations can we believe any of these to be entity called i to wit both in the body and the senses every now and then there occur changes or mutations continuously if it were true that the body and the senses etc were the i in all of us then we would have had to keep on transacting in a manner all these changes have occurred in me only but the real fact is not so we transact ne communicated to others in the manner my eyes have become blurred my legs have become lame etc also if uh, like if it were the case that the eyes and legs were truly ourselves to wit they are identical with i notion then when we express in the manner my eyes it would do cannot the connote the wrong ridiculous meaning of i of the self and this would amount to our using a wrong unintended statement is it not in this context we can bring another universal experience to bear on our, on our mind because of the reason that by means of our hands and feet we can very well catch hold of the external objects and then push them away it becomes quite evident to any person that those external things are distinctly different from us is it not in the same way any part or organ that exists in our body can be removed or wrenched off but merely on this count we do not feel that the uh, we ourselves are removed or cut off if the surgeon cuts off a sore wound grown uh, grown on our body we do not at all feel or reckon that part, uh, that part lying on the ground is myself to wit once it is separated from the body there does not continues any sense of identification or belonging in that inner cut out part in the same way the mucus of the nose the spit the saliva the sweat the hair the vomit the nail etc all such parts of our body we are parting with off and on when they are lying uh, outside on the ground by our side we actually abhor their sight but never do we identify them ourselves with them as being part and parcel of ourselves in the same way we can decide about our senses too in a particular sense to explain my eye my ear my nose in this manner we separate these sense organs from us and cognize them in that manner they are sense organs which are separate parts of my body but not myself in entirety in fact they are organs belonging to me if you further proceed and carry out this process of deep cognition then the eye the ear the nose etc these are truly the various organs and not the senses the senses are pro- functioning in or through these organs but just like the sense organs called in vedantic parlance indriya golaka even those subtle senses which are the means or instruments of cognizing sight hearing and smelling we reckon by separating them from us to wit all of them are objectified by our consciousness apart from this when the functioning of the senses or indriyas lurking in those organs like the eye the ear and the nose diminishes or completely stops no one among us actually believes that we ourselves entirely underwent or experienced the change therefore it is tantamount to concluding that the senses are definitely not the eye in the in us 
anyway the final conclusion that is arrived at, all, uh, at from all the deliberations made so far is the body the senses etc are manifold but i is one only the body and the senses are undergoing or having various changes or mutations even then i remains as it is changeless the body the senses are the uh, cognized objects but i is the subject which cognizes them therefore the body and the senses are just like the external stones sand wooden piece etc physical objects or substances alone they are in fact gross and insentient sentient objects only i am not any one of them at all that conscious entity which cognizes all of them is truly verily myself this i here in this context a doubt may arise doubt may raise its head if the body and the senses are not conscious sentient things and if they are gross insentient objects like a stone sand etc then what about the symptoms of consciousness or sentience that appear in them knowing the objects acquiring them rejecting them and keeping away from them etc all such symptoms of being conscious or sentient are seen in the body and the senses indeed these symptoms which are not seen or found in a stone sand etc where from did these symptoms come into being in the body and the senses a tentative consolation samadhana for this doubt is the symptoms of being conscious or sentient to, uh, do not in truth exist in this a railway engine runs about a magnet draws near it an iron piece a magnifying lens enlarges or magnifies a minute a subtle object but because of these symptoms does anyone ever think those gross things to be conscious or sentient let there be any amount of movement or activity in the body and the senses let there be any amount of energy in them but they are surely not that consciousness or sentience and are not capable of utilizing their own movement activity or their energy for their own sake in fact those who use these bodies and senses are chetanas or conscious or sentient beings the bodies and the senses belong to us or we possess them and we use them for our benefit therefore we are chetanas and they are gross objects indeed to think that in the senses there exists consciousness or sentience is totally wrong for we cognize the senses meaning we are conscious of them and they are objects to our consciousness just as through a telescope we observe subtle things in empty space we perceive through the instruments called senses the external objects therefore the senses are gross insentient phenomena they are means of cognition or perception for us we ourselves who cognize through those means are truly the conscious beings thus it is now established that neither the body nor the senses are the innermost innate being going by the name of i in the main the dialectical device yukti that the cognizer objects like the body and the senses are distinctly not the cognizer or cognizing principle of i he is strengthened but there exists another means or instrument in in us to enable us to cognize these phenomena the body and the senses and that is called mind because this inner instrument itself cognize everything else a doubt may arise quite naturally here in the con- in this construct of context of type of the type that mind itself is the entity i in this manner why should it not be concluded this doubt too is not reasonable or proper so in the next session we will see i am not the mind nor the ego so this is the uh, second session of advaita pancharatnam thank you one and all hare rama